light salvage. Their front looks surprisingly on the up and up. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. Sure am. A few years back they got me started on simple acquisitions. You know those latches they put on cargo bays ain't worth a damn? These days I stick to HQ and look after Miss Lilia. So you're the new captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and executive director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. Charmed. It's nice to see the unreliable again. Useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere. Is Ada still at the helm? I don't know how many times I told Hawthorne to restore that smartass to factory settings. I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings. But there's a catch. There is always a catch. If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? I like that initiative, but ease back on the throttle. Gladys at the rest and go might have what you need. If there's anything else, be quick about it. Time is bits. These days, the scrap business all but runs itself. Gives me the time to expand our interests into other sectors where I can let my hair down. Our field is persuasive acquisitions. At least that's how my legal advisors tell me to phrase it. Not all of our salvage is abandoned when we find it. Sometimes it takes a polite conversation and a shot across the bow. You know, legal formalities. Your words, not mine. Hey, careful with the C word around here. I like to keep things above board, and that kind of talk only makes trouble. Sublight occupies a legal blind spot. No one knows what we're licensed to do, and that gives our little business some freedom. But let's not tempt fate. 
Very. I have this thing about numbers in spreadsheets. Grids in general. I like to think of myself as the last honest businesswoman in Halcyon, but I'll settle for being the most organized one. Ask. I have nothing to hide. Be seeing you. Make sure you aren't followed on your way out. I had a question about your plan, Mr. Vicker. Of course. The cosmos is generated and directed by the universal equation, also known as the Grand Plan. By contemplating the teleological order of things, one can achieve verity. Oh, um, right. You had a question. C&P Borstwurst. It's not the worst unless it's Borstwurst. Is it just me or uh, have a look? You should give our don't take my word. Uh, have How do you... Sorry. Business has been slow. Anything to occupy the time. Of course, I try and steer clear...
for the following story. Basketball finals are scheduled to air soon, but a scandal has rocked the league and thrown this pivotal game into question. Tested negative for performance enhancing skin. A toss ball first. Coaches and referees are debating how and if this behavior could be an unfair advantage. This story brought to you by House in News. All the news that's fit to broadcast. What do you think you're doing? One more hour before the do I picked up some weird chatter on my way in. Hands off the lady, all right? Hmm? Training for This has been Halcyon Your 
I don't have time for this. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the... I've got a... If you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a tut. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Laws, maybe I should charge you double. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little more of flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Thank you. 
If you're here for this week's magazine club meet... Yes, dearie? Take that darling ship of yours down to Roseway, where that distress signal I told you about came from, and ferret out some tasty corporate secrets for old Gladys. Shouldn't be too tough for a fella like you. Any... What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Yeah, I'm getting that, but this area's off limits. I told you. You have done a lot for us, Captain. I'll talk to the Commandant about scheduling a thank you tour for you. Maybe check back in a few days. Well, let me think about it for a minute. Hmm. No? You don't sound awfully sure of that. We got a lot of rules to follow. Hard to remember them all sometimes. Yeah, I'm getting that. You have done a lot for us, Captain. I'll... All right, I, I guess. In and out, though. Just try not to do any shady stuff. I'd like to keep my job. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bit cart he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? 
Oh, it's nothing. I suppose I really didn't have much faith in actually finding him. Was a bit of a long shot, wasn't it? I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things. Tonight. 
Rizzo's Lemon Slap. Slap your whole family tonight. Rizzo's Mock Apple Cider. A hard cider for a hard life. Oh, oh. Knock You Out Bar, a CCN 76 milk chocolate bar with caramel and pea-free nuts in it. It's time for a KYO. Rizzo's Lemon Slap. Slap your whole family tonight. Purpleberry Punch. You want a punch? You got your punch right here. You know that sound when you... I got a full line of weapon modifications I'd be... I could sp so. Rizzo's mock apple cider. A hard cider for a hard life. We interrupt. You'd think the board and its agents would be more content sitting at the top of the system's food chain as they are. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. 
There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Ah, oh, that's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? No! How dreadful. That was always Alex's greatest fear, you know. Devoured by those fiends. Becoming one with their... Their droppings. Right, right. You're going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there. I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go... Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. That's not unreasonable. I guess it's better than losing your organs, but... I don't know, Captain. It just doesn't seem right. Miss Doyle is deeply in debt, and the board has every right to do whatever they like to recoup that debt. What guarantee do I have that she'll agree to the terms you negotiate? You might be surprised. But we'll proceed on the assumption she'll be reasonable. I will recall my collection agent. Tell Miss Doyle to report to me promptly for her first assignment. Now, is there anything else you need, or... Be my guest. Oh, good law! Who'd want to go to that toxic hell pit? A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. Good law, of course not. He'd never set foot on this decrepit junk pile. As this office is the primary embassy for the board on Groundbreaker, corporate bylaws specifically state a room must be maintained for the chairman's exclusive use. You refer to the radiator issue? Oh, goodness, it was dreadful. I was sweating constantly. Chief Tennyson certainly did take her time resolving it. Gracious, no. I can't imagine what gave you that idea. I only facilitated communication between the board and Chief Tennyson. It's not my fault she was stubborn. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. She did everything she could. It was your people's fault, not June Lay's. <laughs> my, aren't you... Hmm... Excitable. Oh, sweetie. I don't owe a grease-stained wrench jockey like her the time of day, let alone my deference. I'm sorry my temper got away from me. Please accept my sincerest apologies to you and your friend. Oh, I'm not used to folks saying sorry. Um, it's... it's not all right exactly, but I appreciate the apology, I guess? Well, now that that's dealt with, was there anything else you wanted to discuss? I'm the certified representative of the board's interests here on the Groundbreaker. I'm their eyes, ears, and busy little hands. I have few complaints. Oh, you've noticed my friends. Wonderful. Aren't their guns very large? Tremendously impressive. They're here to keep the peace, of course. Precisely. Groundbreaker makes much ado about its independent status and so resents any board presence, no matter how benign. When the alternative is board guards at their gates, yes, I do. They don't see it that way, of course, but I can't say I much care. Ask away.
Miami. Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch. Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. That ought to make you smile for once, huh? The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment, but I'm a decent scrapper and a better than average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. You won't be sorry, though it looks like you've got a full roster already. Time to play favorites, Captain. Traveling in style, are we? I'll be sure to nab a cabin with a view. Dr. Fenhill, glad you opted to join us. It'll be good to have a Sawbones on the crew. Got word from Udom, from the hitman who trailed me the other night. Seems I'm indentured to the board now. I ain't too elated about going exclusive, but it's better than winding up dead. You sure saved my skin, stranger. All debts between me and Ellie are cleared. If you're here for this week's magazine club, anytime. You got a second? Hey, we don't know each other yet, but I'm Felix Millstone. I was in the middle of a little discussion with the local authorities when you passed me by. I noticed your ship in port, got to thinking you might be looking for some crew, so I wandered by, just to take a closer look. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot, that's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. You're serious, you're giving me a shot. All right, 
Uh, hang on, hang on. I put together a little speech, just in case you asked. Hey there, I'm Felix Millstone. I have prepared a list of reasons why I believe you should hire me to join the crew of your ship and or outlaw gang. No, 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 wait, let me finish. I wrote the... Firstly, I am highly personable, and I get along well with anyone who is not of the jackass persuasion. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's funny. Uh, secondly, I can be counted on in the event of a firefight, standoff, and or raid. My motto is, if you need a steady gun hand, I'm your man. That motto is a, it's a work in progress. Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not going to regret this. I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is going to be great. Really? We're picking up strays now? Look at that. A real vicar. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get along like a church on fire. Captain, can I get your temperature on something real quick? So, June Lei and I have been talking some. Through messages, I got him here on my data pad, and well, she sent me a poem. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it, because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good, but real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. And the trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. It made my chest hurt, kinda. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting, I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't. I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the veil, they didn't... They said I was cold. No, sir, that's not it. I guess I just needed to talk. I'm feeling a touch better. Thanks for hearing me out, Captain. I actually had another message from Jun Lei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm gonna change that. Right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends, got to thinking... Isabel? Who's... who's Isabel? They were... close, Captain. More than friends' clothes. I don't know. June Lei talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? The Lost Hope? Thanks, Captain. I'll be ready. Mr. Vicker, do you ever get a little bit homesick for Edgewater? For that ocean stink? No, I do not. You're supposed to say yes and go on to explain why. I just want to have a conversation. <laughs> of course.
those purple berry buds of salt, sour, candy, swamp, around the sweet purple berry flavor center. Suck it. Chew it. So, how does this work? We interrupt Do we break? get a table? Stand in a corner? Sorry. Do you have what it takes to defend your corporate township from... Okay, so... What are we drinking? You're the expert? Oh, and don't worry on the price. I got this. Let's just do it proper. Well, that's fruit and such, right? Okay, wine it is. Bottoms up. Purpleberry wine's all right if you require a sweetness to your spirits. It seems like a drink that would suit you, Miss Holcomb. Just mind how much you imbibe. Wow, this is really kind of nice, actually. Who'd have guessed old fruit could taste so good? Oh, Captain, I'm pining for June like something fierce. What am I doing? You're funny. <sighs> yeah, I guess we're doing that, aren't we? Crewing together, seeing the stars. It's like something out of a cereal. I like the ones with grand romances. And I think, I think I'm flubbing mine. I don't know what to do about us. Well, she talked about another girl, right? Isabel mentioned her by name and everything, like she wanted me to know. Maybe I've been making a right fool of myself this whole time. Maybe she's not interested after all. It was real long and rambly. She was telling me a story about her dad, how a lady named Isabel did all sorts of things to try to win his favor. This Isabel lady never quite managed to get her dad's approval, but they carried on anyways. Made something good out of a bad situation. Then it all went down the tubes. Do you think June Lay still has feelings for her? I just got a lot of feelings, Captain, and they're all climbing up my throat. I, I need another drink. Right now. Before I lose- Come on, Captain! I'm here to drink! Okay, maybe you're right, I am a little woozy. Hydration, here I come. Good call. It's best to proceed with a light hand the first time. Shush you. Oh, Captain, I want to talk to Junlei all the time. Even about silly things, but I'm so scared. You're swell, Captain, don't get me wrong. I like spending time with you, going on adventures and all, but that ain't the same as, as romance. Does she think I'm as pretty as I think she's handsome? What if she doesn't like me? What if she does? What if she's still got feelings for that lady, Isabel? What if we, we get together and she gets bored of me? Don't you tease me in my moment of weakness. You know I'm not interested in physical affection. That's... Well, it's tripped folks up in the past. Folks I thought cared about me for me. What if she's not okay with that? What if she is, but then later, she's not? Of course. Wouldn't you be? Huh. I never thought of it that way. I wonder what June's afraid of being rejected for. She seems perfect to me. Maybe those are just my rosish colored goggles talking. To be strong like her. Gosh, I don't know that I got that in me. Sometimes I feel real mean inside, Captain. I think ungenerous thoughts. Well, I suppose so, but I, I want to be my best self for her. A good person. Worth caring for. Well, Captain, this has been... This has been a whole lot. I got just... Wow. So much to think about. Oh, gosh. I... I don't know, Captain. Do you think I should? All right, all right. There's no need to strip your screws over it. Okay. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask June out. Just as soon as we get back to the ship. 
I mean, probably. Eventually. Thanks for hearing me out and giving me counsel. And, well, for being a friend. It means a whole lot. You're good people, Captain. Well, it's not like I could be elsewhere. Nor am I capable of neglecting a wayward lamb in need of guidance. Huh. All right. Thank you, guys. You're real good friends, you know that? I wish... I wish there was a place we could all live quiet together. Come on, let's go. I've seen you limping a bit. Are you all right, Mr. Vicker? Need us to slow down? What are you implying? I am perfectly fit. My uh, knee is just acting up. There's no shame in being older, Mr. Vicker. Don't worry. The captain and I will take care of you. I need neither your advice nor your pity, young lady. Hey, Captain. I hope I wasn't too much bother at the bar. I did have fun, and I tried some things I never would have otherwise. Some of the drinks we tried I even liked. I guess it's not all disgusting. And I don't feel it today. I guess that water must have worked. I'm glad I had you looking out for me. I messaged June Lei when we got back and she replied super quick. <clears throat> okay. I was awake half the night thinking about what I sent, anxious to see what you said. I reread my message in the morning and it was unclear. I was drinking when I sent it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the courage. Also, sorry for the typos. Oh, she called mashed potatoes smashed potatoes, but I think maybe that's just what they call them on Groundbreaker. I've ruined things in the past because I didn't say things I should have, like I've met someone who's become special to me. I want to be honest with her, so if she feels the same about me, there won't be any surprises. Oh, isn't she sweet? Like one of those two-bit romances where one soul's all stiff and formal and... I should be glad to perhaps take hold of your hand, miss. I ought to go write her back. I mean, I already did. Twice. <laughs> but anyhow, thanks for taking me out, Captain. Thank <laughs> you. 